All right, guys, welcome back to the Open for Business podcast. Today, we have uh, a couple of the very special guests live in the studio. We are talking to Dave and Fiona from Pipe Wolf Media, the very people that edit this podcast. And uh, as you can guess, today we are going to be talking all things podcasting. Dave and Fiona are going to talk us through how to best set up to create your own podcast, as well as all the technical aspects that go into getting your podcast live on platforms like iTunes and Spotify. So if you're thinking about launching a podcast, then stay tuned. We're going to have a great chat with Dave and Fiona. Dave? Hey, Fiona. How are you guys? Good. For everybody listening in, um, we are sitting here today. We are in the, uh, the Attention Media office. We, uh, we've got our full podcast uh, and video setup going. And uh, across from me, I have the guys, the lovely team from Pipe Wolf Media, who actually edit this podcast and quite a range of other podcasts. So it's great to have you guys here and um, yeah, welcome to Shep. Thanks. We're happy Thank to you. be here. Yeah, <laughs> Shepparton's amazing. Love it. You, you just got here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Sheffield before, so I can wholeheartedly yeah. say that. It's yeah, excellent. that's true. Excellent. That's true. We love to hear that. We love to hear that. So, guys, um, we are just going to have a bit of a chat today uh, with Dave and uh, and Fiona because we want to talk all things podcasting. And um, literally, there is no agenda for this show. We're just going to have a bit of a chat um, and pick your brains, guys, about uh, about the podcasting world. Um, but let's start off with uh, with your story. What uh, what's Pipe Wolf Media, and what do you guys do? So I'll jump in first and say that Fiona's going to talk the most because she's. Uh, I'm not very articulate, and I know I'll make many mistakes. So yeah, if you I'm hear more of Fiona, then that's why. <laughs> We're enjoying the dulcet sounds of, uh, of Dave. So. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay. So, Fight Wolf Media is our business. We specialize in film and audio production. So, we're primarily videographers. Mm -hmm. We film our videos for web and primarily local businesses. Um, we're based in Wollongong, but we also do audio. So, we do podcast editing and yes. anything to do with audio editing, which we really love. We love working with podcasts there. The way of the future, really. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so you guys are from Wollongong, um, and uh, you've been uh, down in Melbourne doing a bit of work on the way back. Um, it's awesome to have you in. We uh, at Attention Media have a couple of clients, uh, and that you guys do the editing for their podcast as well, which is awesome. But um, what makes a good podcast uh, in your guys' eyes or ears, as the case may be? Wow, fantastic question. Making a podcast, there's a lot of factors involved. This is all just the technical side. Fiona will talk about the other side, which is also very important. But they're technically using things just like microphones that are close to your mouth mm -hmm. uh, creates that really clear sound. Yeah. But then when it comes to editing, it's the way where you can create a story with music or with sound effects or cutting to certain interviews with other parts before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very important sections of making a really good podcast. But my favorite thing is when you add a podcast to iTunes is how I'm going to get so distracted with this bit because I could talk for hours. Fiona will take over this bit whilst <laughs> continue thinking along this side. Oh, sorry. Okay, so in terms of what makes a great podcast, in our opinion, a lot of it's about your content and, yep. and staying on your topics. Mm -hmm. So... There's nothing worse than you've fallen in love with a podcast because, you know, let's say they do music reviews or they, yeah. you know, discuss certain, you know, the political podcast or it's mm -hmm. an interview podcast. Yeah. And then they start doing episodes that are off the beaten track. Yeah. And that's not why you've subscribed to them. Mm -hmm. So a big thing is picking a format or a topic that you're going to dedicate to and keep replicating yeah. over a long time. Because that's why people are coming to you. Yeah. And short and sharp, I think, is always great. You know, anything over 40 minutes has to be pretty good to keep people there. That 20 to 30 minutes is usually the sweet spot. Yep. Especially when you're mindful about your audience. What are they doing while they're listening to podcasts? Mm -hmm. They're usually cooking dinner, driving in the car. Yeah. So they're not doing big jobs. Do you know what? Actually, there's a, uh, don't mean to cut you off, oh, but a really interesting uh, thing I saw today. On Instagram, um, the Sasha Group, which is a division of Gary Manchuk's Van Media over in the US, they are all about helping small to medium enterprises. And there was a post on Instagram that they put up this morning saying that the ideal length of time for a podcast is 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning behind that is because 
the average commute, oh, sorry, no, it's 16 minutes because the average commute mm-hmm. in the US overall is 25 minutes. So they're saying that overall, if you have a 16 minute podcast, people can listen to that on average during their commute. But there was a lot of people commenting and talking about Joe Rogan's podcast and saying, you know, they're a couple of hours long, guys. So, and it's a very, very popular one. So it, you know, it's, it's he said, he said, she said. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think, yeah, it depends on the topic. And like you said, you've got to be able to hold somebody's interest. I yeah. think the first thing for me would be identifying who your target market is. Mm-hmm. And then imagining in there, like if you if you wanted to talk to businessman or like business person traveling to work, yeah. then the average amount of time is like yeah, probably like twenty to twenty minutes to an hour. Yeah. And you got to think, well, if I've got them for a you know average forty minutes, mm-hmm. that's how long the podcast should be. Yeah. Where things like Hamish and Andy, yes. um, their big thing was like an hour long because yep. they're driving you home exactly. so they're assuming that you've got an hour to spend yep. to listen to it Stuck in traffic. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah perfect i love that love but that. yeah content is key i think like mm-hmm. i will listen to a podcast for an hour if it's a really compelling interview with somebody that yeah. i'm really interested in hearing their story mm-hmm. for me personally there's nothing worse than waffle yeah. i hate it when it takes 15 minutes for the inter- i'm a big interview you know podcast follower i love a good interview but if they spend the first 15 minutes just waffling about yes. the host is just chatting for ages mm-hmm. and then finally they, oh, now we're going to start the interview. Yep. For me, that's a bit of a put off. I'm happy to listen to you waffle a little bit at the end. Yeah. But I want, I want to get into just that. Just get straight into yeah. it. Yeah. What I really recommend to people that we work with who are starting podcasts, mm-hmm. I always say to them, find other podcasts that you want yours to be similar to yep. and look at their format, look at their length, look at what's working for them. Because if you're working on, so for example, we've got one client who is a child psychologist. So she's doing podcasts for parents Mm -hmm. and educators around psychology tips for children. And then we've got another client who is, you know, making a business podcast, tips for Mm -hmm. business people. And there's completely different audiences right Mm -hmm. there. And so I I don't know, you know, one of them is the mums who are maybe at home, maybe I have very small bites of time, mm-hmm. but are listening to it for a different reason than the business person. Yeah, is. so true. And I'm pretty sure the stats that I read recently is like the biggest podcast category on like iTunes online yep. is business and finance. Yep. So if you're in that space, you've got a lot of competition. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're probably talking to people that are more time poor. Yep. Whereas if you're more entertainment based, um, and you're doing these hour-long interviews with high successful people that are hard to get a hold of. Mm. You can probably afford to be a little bit longer. Yeah. But I think a lot of it's being creative, like with how you deliver your podcast. So, for example, um, Kristen Tippett, who does the On Bean podcast, which is a really big one, every episode she releases two audios of two versions. Yep. So she releases the edited version, which mm-hmm. will go for just under an hour. Mm-hmm. And then she releases the unedited version, which will go for like an hour and a half. That's cool. So you can pick if you want to listen to the raw entire mm-hmm. recording or or just the polished version. Yeah. And I think even that is, is a creative way to approach and to yeah. understand this is what your audience want. Giving them the choice, like, yeah. that's what it's all about. I know for me personally, if podcasts are five minutes or shorter, I can't be bothered, mm, yeah. <laughs> which sounds weird. <laughs> True. Um, but I like to make one decision and go, this is the podcast I'm going to listen to while I do yeah. this, whatever task I'm doing. Yeah. And if it ends too soon, like that can also be frustrating. <laughs> the, yeah. the best thing also is even when you're creating the content, like what you're doing right now is filming the actual podcast recording, yeah. is you can plan ahead with people who you want to talk to and or even just piece the camera or just the giving out tips like you have done over the past and the best thing you could do is you record it but you can also put it up on different platforms so when we're talking about you know 10 minute segments or 20 minute segments Mm. you can cut them down into little audio bites for instagram or even create little video content so you put it on youtube and then you can cut it down and put them on facebook instagram There's so many platforms out there that you can share the interesting yeah. topic on. But, yeah, it's it's very key to have something that's interesting mm. and to share it and not to spend the time just talking about what you want to talk about and just right. waffle on. Exactly. 
exactly. like I there's feel gonna, like there's it. There's going to be something in it for people, isn't there? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it's not an audio diary. That's for right. For you to express. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got your nose and got some feelings. So mm. speaking of that, I know that um, you know we get asked this question uh, a fair bit. You know, what goes into a podcast? Like, if anybody who you know maybe like a oh, cool, I really want to start a podcast, whether it's myself or whether it's for a business. Can you guys sort of run us through from sort of start to end on how it would work? Um, you know, obviously there's lots of different variations. I've like got lots of different pieces of equipment and all that sort of stuff. But like really, if you've got a, um, a little um, lav mic, you can plug that into your smartphone, get some really good audio quality and go from there. Like it's pretty simple. But um, yeah, what can you guys tell us about starting a podcast? Well, I think that there's two things to consider. There is the technical audio equipment side, which Dave will talk about. Mm-hmm. And then there's also the actual content creation yep. and shaping where your bullseye is. And they both have to happen simultaneously. Mm. So from a content point of view, you need to work out what your podcast is and what it isn't. Um, you also need to work out, yeah, who are you speaking to? What topics are they going to engage with? Like yeah. I said before, what's similar to what already exists? Is similar to what you would like to do. Mm. So a bit of market research. It's hard to release a podcast and pivot it a lot. You kind of yeah. need to launch it, you know, being in the general direction of what yeah. it is. It will evolve over time, but, you do know. Do you planning up front? Yeah. And then I would, um, I personally recommend that you record a number of episodes before launching. Yes, love that. Because. There's nothing worse than mm. someone launches of a five minute and there's nothing. That's right. Yeah. Like a week or two weeks or mm. yeah. Yeah. And even if you don't launch them all at the same time, it gives you that like, you might have three up there, but you've recorded six. That's right. And so then you launch of the three and then you've got three weeks to keep adding mm. those extra ones because at the beginning people aren't going to be lining up to get interviewed by you or they're That's not right. going to be lining up to listen to you yeah. and it might take you a little while to find your feet with it mm-hmm. and you always want to be a bit ahead if you're going to go for a weekly podcast yeah you want to have a few up your sleeve because you know what if you're sick or what if a guest falls through and right. you know something happens yeah. i think podcasts is a similar misillusion to what people get around social media whatever that's easy and breezy and mm-hmm. you just wake up and just do it yeah there's a lot of planning that goes into it you're basically creating your own radio show. Mm -hmm. So, um, and especially if you're going to have guests on, you know. There's logistics. (laughs) Yeah, there's logistics. And, and that might be, there might be prep that goes into that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. In, in addition to all the technical things that you need to figure out and the equipment and everything, you really need to have some sort of direction. When you look at the most successful podcasts, they have really wide followings Mm -hmm. They're regular, they're yep. doing, they're delivering the same level of content or the mm. same level of professionalism each time. Yeah. And they also have a great support system around them. They've got great social media websites. You don't just have, it's very rare to find a podcast that has no web framework. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So there, there's even that to think about, like, how are people going to find your podcast? Yeah. How are you going to sell it? The um, distribution sort of things. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And, and part of that is great when you start having guests on because yeah. if you've got a guest with a big following, then they're going to yeah, exactly. rep that through their channels. But, yeah, I, I think people often come to us wanting to know the technical side of what they need to do. Yeah. But very – it's Don't not very – yeah, it's yeah. just like have you actually sat down and none of this – I'm – it's amazing how people haven't done any research around yeah. what kind of podcasts they're trying to emulate. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're going to fail, but it just means you might make yeah, exactly. that learning curve a little bit steeper than it needs to be. That's right. Yeah. But just like a marketing campaign. Like, exactly. You know, you've got to do the, the strategy up front. Otherwise, you know, you've got no idea what's going to happen mm. and whether yeah. you're going to be reaching the right target audience. So what about the, uh, the technical, the technical side? side. Yeah, Everybody the- thinks that this is the solution to every podcast. Fiona said was actually really true. If you haven't got the podcast idea mm. set in stone, and what you want to do and the people you want to interview and the direction you want to take, yeah. then you can have all the equipment in the world and you still wouldn't come out good. Um, and I don't, I don't mean that you won't sound good. You'll sound amazing, but people may just clock off pretty quick if yeah. they don't see they're getting anything out of it. Technically minded, we, we, we I recently got um, something from Rode 
which is all time favorite Love company. Road. Love Road. Shout out to Road. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening, guys. Yeah. Support this podcast. Yeah. They have a lot of gear for podcasting. Mm. And they even have this uh, little attachment, which is called an uh, CSXL, mm. which plugs into your phone and it outputs to two little lav microphones. So you can be out on the street or, you know, just randomly meet up with someone to do a podcast. And what this does is you can plug it straight into your phone, sit down somewhere that's quiet, preferably somewhere that's got heaps of furniture because that actually helps deaden the sound, <laughs> just like this place. Yes. Uh, All so, the great furniture. Yeah. So uh, doing that, you can just quickly get a really clear interview with someone. Mm. But if you are just starting out and you've got a podcast you want to do and you want to give it a test run, mm-hmm. you just grab your phone and hold it as close to your mic, to your mouth and do your voice memos. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Sounds really good. That's it. Yeah, and that's as simple as it is. And then what we do is as part of our subscriptions is that I actually work on creating an intro to podcasts and also an outro, so we have you access. Do a good job at it too, by the way. Oh, oh you! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not because we're here or anything, right? No. no, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so what we do is, uh, I we have a conversation with you over the phone, and we're like, "What's your favorite podcast style? Mm. What's what's your favorite music? What's your what do you have in your mind?" Yeah. And then I will then source through our music database and then find something that best suits you and find some options and such Mm -hmm. so that's just all in the process what we actually do technically what we actually recommend technically is finding a quiet room so what you've got set up here is amazing it's a a big open area that's just recently refurbished like lacking furniture (laughs) lacking furniture but it's uh it's definitely coming to that point of like You've got the carpet mm. and we've got this nice clear room and what you need is like the, the ultimate spot is somewhere that has heaps of furniture, soft furniture, not the hard, hard yes. furniture. So that creates, uh, that softens the bounce of the sound. Mm-hmm. So okay. exactly. Yep. And if you want to, and you've, Anthony's done this and I've witnessed it and it sounded really good when you recorded your podcast in the car. Mm. Cars are fantastic mm. because of the fabric that's in the yeah. seats. Yeah. Um, stuff like that is just kind of keeping in mind. But the ultimate, ultimate thing to do is do a test recording and then listen back. Yeah. Never just jump into a recording and then Especially when hopefully. Especially got a guest lined up or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. Um, and I like I did this today and I... Uh, this is probably just a throw in of one of my favorite things that I love to do mm. is before when you're doing an audio test, never do the test one, two, three, test one, two, three, okay. because you will naturally speak louder than you what you naturally would because you're like, oh, I have to test the microphone. I have to speak up. Mm-hmm. What you do is what I always do is ask people what they love to eat or what their favorite food is. So at that point, they just start talking because they're thinking mm-hmm. and talking at the same time. Yeah. So then they'll naturally talk at their lower level. Mm-hmm. So that's just the tip I usually say. So if you're okay. sitting down with someone and you want to test the, the volumes, just ask them something like that yep. and then that will speak to, yeah, that's. Don't get them to shout into the microphone. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Can I just add on to that? Please? Yeah. Yeah, so in essence, if you want to um, start a podcast, you can basically do it with an iPhone and and some basic equipment. It is important that the audio is clear. Mm -hmm. So a listener will forgive a little bit of background noise or whatever, but audio is quite unforgiving in general. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all heard those interviews where it's been prefaced. You know, we've interviewed this person on the phone and it was a bad line. And if you're interested in the interview, you might hang in there. Mm -hmm. I've personally listened to podcasts where the audio is so bad that I'm just like, I can't continue to listen, so I'm out. The clarity of your audio is important. So you can achieve that on, you know, something simple like an iPhone. And if you're just starting out, you probably don't want to invest hundreds of dollars at the beginning. But it also depends on what kind of podcasts you're recording. Are you doing face-to-face interviews? Are you doing them, you know, on the phone or over Skype or Zoom? you know, let you know what kind of equipment you'll need because that will change, you know, which direction you're heading in with your equipment. So true. But the the place where 
as important as your equipment is, the other thing that is really important is the space in which you're recording, like Dave was saying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a padded room, um, something that's sound absorbing is best. It can even be, it doesn't have to be glamorous. People won't see you. One of my favorite podcasts, she records it on the floor of her walk-in wardrobe. I was just about to say, I've recorded podcasts in the car. I've also recorded them in the walk-in robe. Yeah, because it, it... dead with sound it's, like there's it's so good. you know material everywhere mm. it is actually fantastic for audio you don't have a walk-in wardrobe you can get a table and put cloth like towels and blankets and quilts over the top and sit underneath it yep. and you will have a makeshift Perfect. recording studio our house um, where we work from has tiled floors mm. and is all open it's yeah. all terrible for audio mm-hmm. dave has literally stuck his head inside one of our padded like suitcases with a microphone and record it in there. Yep. Yep. So it's gotta not, you got to do, do. You gotta do what you gotta do. So yes, you can outlay hundreds of dollars, but you can also, a lot of it's just about being clever. So yeah, I would say start with minimum, but make sure the audio is clear. And then once your podcast gets traction, then look at investing and setting yourself up a bit more. Awesome. But even to get a full setup, you're looking at under a thousand dollars in general. Am I right there? <laughs> um, so it's not super expensive as, as you know. There's, there's so many like options. Like, I mean, yeah. like, you know, we're, we're using um, Rode um, Procaster mics. There's a, there's a Zoom H6 recorder we're recording into. Like, you know, all these things combined, you're looking at around the $1,000 mark plus. But there's so many alternatives and options like yeah. for, to suit anybody's budget right from just like the the lav mic that we've spoken about plugged into a phone all the way up to like studio quality you know stuff so you can sort of make it work um to your budget which is really cool which is really cool yeah guys i want to run let's do like a little bit of a uh, a walkthrough on how um we create a podcast so from our end um with our podcast with the client's podcast um, we'll sit, we'll record the, uh, the audio. Our clients normally record, uh, their podcasts, you know, by themselves or with a guest. They use whatever equipment they have. Um, they send us the audio files. So if anybody who's thinking about creating a podcast, um, you can talk to the guys at Pipe Wolf Media and, uh, work with those guys directly. All you need to do is create a podcast, um, do all the upfront work like Fiona has suggested. And uh, send the, that quality audio file through to the guys at Pipe Wolf. Then from there, they'll work their magic. Um, you then need something to host your podcast on. So you need a, uh, a podcast hosting platform like uh, some popular ones like Libsyn or we use Podbean. Um, there's quite a few out there now. Um, and that's where your podcast will live online. And that gives you the, the RSS feed that you then submit to platforms like iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify. And, uh, and that's your distribution network for the podcast. So from there, it's then, uh, you gotta do the hard work to get it out there and, um, promotion, like we've talked about digital media, social media, um, and have a bit of a plan to get that podcast. Uh, to as many uh, listeners as possible. Yeah, from there, you just got to keep working at it. Be patient and uh, keep improving over time, which is really, really cool. Guys, before we do wrap things up, can you tell us a little bit more about what uh, Pipe Wolf does apart from audio? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We do a lot of videos. Yeah. So we work with local businesses to get their message out on social, mainly on social media and through mm-hmm. their websites. So... A lot of people have fantastic products or fantastic businesses that are best described through vision, through audio. So someone can sit up and say, you know, I've got a cafe and I make the world's best Mm. coffee. But Mm. when you see, you know, some shots of the cafe and you see the baristas talking about, you know, the processes that they do to make your moves, it, it really drives those messages home. So we love to bring websites to life through adding video content on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also so many statistics to show that video really is the way of the future. Yeah. As humans, we love to be entertained. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the, a recent statistic that I read said that when people watch a video, they retain 95% of the information in the video. Right. When they read text, they retain 10% yeah. of the information. It's massive. But, you know, I know that's true for myself. If I watch mm-hmm. a documentary at the end of that 90 minutes, I can pretty much tell you everything about yeah, exactly. what step I've learned. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. if you ask me to sit down for 90 minutes and read a text 
book on that same topic, I've probably zoned out many times. Yeah. We love infographics. We love demonstrations. We love seeing mm. before and afters. Mm. We relate to a human being talking to camera, explaining to us, yep. you know, that what something is. I mean, we even understand how many times we send someone an email and then we get on the phone for clarification because we know that we can write something, but we can actually explain it through audio that's more right. clearly. So that's what we really want to do. We want to help businesses communicate with their with their audience through their website, through their social medias. But we do a lot of different, we do event filming, a lot of highlight reels, a lot of testimonials, yep. product demonstrations. So any given day, we're off doing something completely different. Yeah. So we offer podcast editing subscriptions. Yeah. The main reason for that is to do a one-off podcast is not really affordable mm. to do the whole setup and, and everything. We like subscriptions because we can work with a client ongoing and we can help, yep. you know, by work on their, their podcast over time. Yep. So the way that that works is we have a three month minimum commitment. Mm -hmm. Once someone has committed for three months, it's then cancel any time. So it's a little bit like your Netflix or your, your Spotify yeah. where, you know, you just cancel and it's over. Yep. So we're not about locking people in or making them, you know, we're not Optus. <laughs> <laughs> And so, shout out to Optus. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Optus. But you know, that's not the, the intention. Isn't with the subscription is just to have an ongoing working relationship. It's not to exactly. you know lock people into something like scary. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like you said before, people record their podcasts. We're happy to give tips and suggestions on how to improve those recordings if people are having trouble. And then we take those files, we clean them up, so we remove the ums and the ahs. We take out all of the you know, the stumbles or that maybe you, there was a part of the interview that you covered with somebody and then afterwards you're like, oh, we don't really yeah. want to say that. There might've been a phone call or an interruption. Mm -hmm. We fix all of that up for you. We put an intro and outro onto it. You might have had a separate recording where you recorded an intro mm -hmm. later on. So we, we piece all that together for you and then we submit that yeah to your RSS feed. We may, we're happy to set that up for you and host that for you, um, mm -hmm. which is an additional extra. So I just want to jump in there. Yeah. Another thing that um, people don't really know that what we do is I go through the whole audio for the podcast and level out. So one of the big things that there's been complaints about podcasts, like TV ads, mm -hmm. when they come in, it just is a loud sound. So that's called luffs. Um, so for podcast world, uh, minus 16 luffs, technical speak jargon, but it means that it stays a consist consistency throughout. So a lot of podcasts, especially when it's uh, recording on Zoom, mm -hmm. one person's microphone may be lower than the others. So what I do is I then go in through there and separate all the audio tracks and then level them out. So then when they all sound the same level, when you hear it again, so the idea is to be able to edit the podcast so it sounds like nothing <laughs> has been done, as in it just sounds right. normal, sounds right. Very natural. Yeah, so that's just another thing I just wanted to throw in. Oh, yeah. yeah. When Dave, we say Dave weaves his magic, he really does. That's right. It's <laughs> so true. It's and so then, um, so yeah, when the podcast is ready, we submit it to your RSS feed, which then triggers it to appear on you know iTunes, Spotify, mm -hmm. wherever people get their podcasts. Which is the great thing as well with that one submission, it will then appear in, in right. multiple locations around the web. Yeah. And at that point, it's launched, it's live, and you can tell your listeners about it. We can also schedule podcasts. So sometimes people send us five or six podcasts at one time and we'll edit them and schedule them for release dates. So again, we have a range of clients which have a range of audiences. Mm -hmm. So some of our clients have more of an ad hoc, you know, it's relaunched whenever it's ready. Mm -hmm. Other people are like, I want my podcast to go up at 6 p.m. on Wednesday every week. Yep. So we schedule that. So, yeah, that's basically our, our service in a nutshell. We have a really good working relationship with all of our podcast clients. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of back and forth. We really want to make sure that the podcast is sounding the way that they want it to. Mm -hmm. But our biggest message to them all the time is we can only improve what's there. So we're really invested in making sure that the audio recordings that they're originally capturing are as clean as possible yeah. because you can only improve the full right. recording so much. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that's in, in essence. It's a, a very stress-free process. The idea is that they've recorded it and then yes. they have to think about it again. They've sent it to us and we've that's got it. it from there. That's it. Yeah. Love it. You guys can do all the hard work, make it sound uh, as awesome as possible, and, uh, and away we go. 
Exactly. Guys, thank you so much. Um, we uh, we will definitely have some questions coming out of this podcast, I am sure. So how can people best contact you guys? Our website is pipewolfmedia.com. Right. So it's P-I-P-E-W-O-L-F, like the animal. Right. <laughs> um, and you can also grab us on our email, which is info at pipewolfmedia.com. And, yeah, all of our information is on there. Perfect. Dave, Fiona, thank you so much for being on the Open for Business podcast. Uh, we'll let you get back to Wollongong so you can edit this puppy and get it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Look so forward to it. Thanks, Anthony. So that's it for another episode. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. If you love the show, the greatest form of feedback you can give is to leave a review. It helps the show grow. It helps more people find it. And I would really appreciate that. Head over to anthonygmurphy.com where you'll find all the show notes and links for today's episode. And if you just want to stay up to date with me and see what I'm up to, head over to Instagram, anthonygmurphy and say day. And I will talk to you in the next episode.